Hi, Mrs. Smith. How are you today? My name is Barb. I'm your nursing assistant. And we're going to give you a bath, help you feel a lot better after the sweaty night I heard you had last night from not feeling good. So first thing I'm going to do is wash my hands, pull the curtain all the way around. Um, the bed I already raised in the high position as well as putting the side rails up to facilitate the taping of this. If I had come in the room in a real life situation with the bed up, the first thing I would have done is lower the bed. So with the curtain pulled, I've already checked the bed breaks. Now I'm going to put on my gloves. I have filled my basin with comfortably warm water. I have at least four washcloths and two towels. And I've covered Mrs. Smith with a nice warm bath blanket. I also have a clean gown handy, and I have a barrier on the table. Whenever you're bathing a resident, it's nice to have the table right close to where you're working with the basin at the end where you're working, and then you don't have to be lunging back and forth to get things. I have soap, and I also have a bottle of lotion because we're going to give a back rub at the end of the bath. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove Mrs. Smith's gown very carefully, keeping her covered. Here we go, Mrs. Smith. Let's take this arm out. We don't want to get your gown wet as we're bathing you. So you had a rough night last night. I'm so sorry to hear that. They said you got very diaphoretic. Well, that's the medical term for sweating, in case you're not familiar with that. And I'm going to carefully reach my hamper. Okay, Mrs. Smith. Have a nice warm wash rag for your face here. That'll make you feel better. So the temperature of this water should be between 110 and 115 degrees. That's because it cools off more quickly than bath water. I've made my mitt. And if you close your eyes, Mrs. Smith, I'm going to start at the eye opposite, inside corner out, turning my wash rag, other eye, inside corner out, turning my wash rag again. And I'm going to wash the rest of her face under her chin, getting behind her ears. Oh, there you go, Mrs. Smith. You can put that back in the basin if there's no drainage from her eyes. We're going to very gently pat dry. There we go. How does that feel? Okay. Now we're going to come over. And for the purpose of taping, I'm only going to bathe one side of her body, meaning one arm and one leg. But obviously in real life, we do both sides. My bath water is still warm. I'm making a mitt. I'm going to put on some soap, get it all sudsy. And here we go, Mrs. Smith. Why don't we even have you put your hand in the basin on top of the towel? Oh, doesn't that feel wonderful? So with long strokes, we're going to wash the arm, get underneath the armpit. I hope you're not ticklish. <laughs> and then we're going to get in between each of the fingers. If someone is not able to bathe themselves in long-term care frequently, um, their hands will need attention, and it feels wonderful for them to soak their hands. So now I have a clean cloth for rinsing with long strokes, and we're going to get that soap from under the armpit, and we're going to rinse between the fingers. And if I had a lot of time, I could do this very leisurely and even let Mrs. Smith soak her hand a while longer. Okay, there you go. You're all rinsed. The towel is right here, so I'm simply going to fold it over. We're going to gently pat dry, paying attention to dry well between the fingers. There you go, Mrs. Smith. How does that feel? Okay, now we're going to wash the chest. So we're going to put the towel across Mrs. Smith horizontally, pulling the bath blanket down to her abdomen. You want to be very respectful and keep your resident covered. My washcloth is not soiled at this point in time. If her hands were dirty, so to speak, I could at this point change my washcloth. I'm going to get some more soap. Okay, I'm going to carefully lift up the towel and I'm going to wash Mrs. Smith's chest. Now she, being an elderly woman, has pendulous breasts, meaning they hang down, so I want to be very careful to lift them up and look underneath because there, I see there's redness on this side, which could be a possible yeast infection. I would want to pay attention to see if there's any odor or drainage that goes along with it, so I can let the nurse know as soon as I'm done with the bath. So we've washed. 
Now we're going to come back and rinse. If there is redness under the breast, it's going to be very tender and painful. So you want to be very gentle and careful. Oh, is that sore, Mrs. Smith? I'm sorry. I'll be real gentle here. Okay, now we're going to gently pat dry. I'm going to lift the breast very carefully to get underneath them. You feel dry there, Mrs. Smith? Okay, what we're going to do now is turn the towel lengthwise so that we can wash the abdomen. So we're going to bring the bath blanket down to the pubic area and we're going to wash the abdomen. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to be observing for any distension, which could mean bloating in the abdomen because of intestinal problems or even if the bladder is distended. I'm going to feel the washcloth here, Mrs. Smith. There. Hope you're not ticklish again. Okay. Abdomen feels pretty soft. You're not having any discomfort there, are you? Good. Okay. Now we're going to rinse. I know you're waiting for your breakfast. Here, let's get all the soap off you there. Okay. And now we'll pat dry. Okay, I'm going to keep you covered, keep you nice and warm. And now we're going to move down to the lower part of the bed. We're going to wash Mrs. Smith's leg. But before we do that, I'm going to put the towel underneath her leg to help protect the sheets. Here we go, Mrs. Smith. Can you bend this leg? Okay, if you can keep it up for me, we're going to keep her covered, especially her private area. My water still looks good to go. If at any point in time you feel like the water needs to be changed because it's cold or it's soapy or dirty, feel free to do so. We're definitely going to change the water after we wash her feet. Okay, going to wash your leg, Mrs. Smith, with long strokes up and down. We're going to go clear up the thigh. Okay, and we're going to rinse. And as I'm washing, I'm going to observe, is there any swelling in the lower leg, any bruised or open areas, anything that I should report to the nurse, any inflammation in the knee joint. Okay, you're all rinsed, so you can straighten out your leg, and we'll pat your skin dry. <clears throat> we don't want to rub real hard like we do on our younger bodies to get ourselves dry because the skin of elderly people is so fragile. And now if you bend your knee, Mrs. Smith, we are going to let you soak your foot in this basin. It's going to feel really wonderful. The water is still nice and warm. And again, if I had time, I would allow Mrs. Smith a nice five minutes or so while I visit with her, letting her foot soak in the water. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and wash it really well. Excuse me. I want to get in between the toes. The feet of elderly people usually need a lot of attention and long-term care. So you want to see if the nails need trimming, if there's calluses, especially if they're diabetic, you want to pay attention, see if there's any open areas, any redness from shoes being too tight or whatever. Okay, so we've washed and we've rinsed Mrs. Smith's foot. Oh, let's get you dried up really well there, Mrs. Smith. I don't see any reddened areas. And I know your feet are ticklish, so I'll be careful not to tickle you. Okay, I think you're nice and dry there. Now at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and change the water in my basin. So, this washcloth is going in the hamper. In the clinical setting, I would take my dirty water and dump it down the toilet. But for filming purposes, I'm going to put it in the sink. I would rinse out my basin. I could even disinfect it. I'm going to refill it with comfortably warm water in 110 and 115 degrees if I had a bath thermometer. I'm also going to change my gloves at this point in time. I'm going to decontaminate my hands and I'm going to put on my gloves. If I had to step away from the bed and take the basin to the bathroom, I would have needed to lower the bed um, and the side rails to keep Mrs. Smith safe. 